Welcome back to Branson, Missouri. I'm Christine Deaton, and this is my cooking nook. Fed up fast, easy, and delicious. Today we are doing a fast, easy, and delicious Italian feast. I'm very excited about this menu, and I'm telling you, you know Italian cooking sometimes, well, most of the time takes all day because you make your sauce and everything. Well, we've got a great sponsor out there, Kathy Pagliari. I think you're out there right now. Yes. And Kathy is going crazy all over the United States. And now, I'm, you know, if you want me to tell about where you're going next, I'd love to. Let me know on the feed, Kathy, if I can tell folks what's happening now. But we're using your sauce today. We're using your, this is Cucina di Catarina, and they call it the, Ita the traditional Italian gravy. This is amazing spaghetti Italian sauce, and we are using it in our giant stuffed shells today. What a menu I've got. Now, I want you guys to come over here because I have an antipasto salad. Now, if you ever went to an Italian house, which we did every time we'd ever have some kind of Italian festival, anything in the Italian house is always a festival. <laughs> I will say that's a big party. Every time you woke up. So growing up, you know, we'd go to my grandmother's a lot, and we'd have, we'd have these big giant holidays or birthday parties or whatever, and there was always a big giant platter of antipasto. Well, I decided to make an antipasto salad, so I want to go through that and tell you what we've got. This is just romaine lettuce, and in it I've got um, shredded Parmesan cheese and some green onion. And then I've got some plum, tom or actually grape tomatoes, I've got zucchini, I've got bell pepper and onion. And over here, this is, well, this is what kind of, this side kind of makes it the, the uh, antipasto uh, salad. salad. So I've got sliced provolone. These are mozzarella pearls, they're called. Little mozzarella balls, but they're called mozzarella pearls. I've got hard salami. We've got um, green olives, we've got pepperoncini, we've got black olives. And of course I've got, I want to show you, I had to send away for these. We were no, used to this no. in New York, but Stella Doro breadsticks, okay? So that's what we're using today. And I've got a balsamic dressing, and I've got a regular traditional Italian dressing. So that is my antipasto salad. That okay. That's wonderful. I'm going to throw together my dessert because it's going to be very quick, okay, very fast. How is everybody doing out there? I hope everybody's doing well. Um, we, today, we were supposed to do our discussion, and I might throw some of that information out there to you, but because we've got such a great festival and a feast right here in my kitchen, uh, I don't know if we're going to get to that, but we will at some point. It's just helpful hints about meat, okay? So we'll see if we can get to that. In the meantime, I'm going to throw my dessert together. The dessert is actually zucchini orange little loaves. You can make this as a cake. You can make this as cupcakes, muffins, loaves. I'm just going to do the little loaf pans just because. I just got this little loaf pan two weeks ago, and I love it, and I want to use it again. Okay, so I have one cup of shredded zucchini. That's going in. Make sure you get it all. And Harlan just joined us. Hi, Harlan. And clean as you go, folks. Clean as you go. I actually have about not quite a quarter, not quite a half a cup of dried cranberries. Those are actually going in, too. Okay, then I have some rind, some orange rind. I had two beautiful big fat oranges. Oh, yeah, some, one orange I'm using for my drinks that are on the table with my family, and the other one, I actually squeeze the juice of the one orange that's going in. Look at this already. I just want you to see how beautiful, look guys, wow. how pretty that looks. Okay? Now the regular <laughs> ingredients that you would put, I, want, I have half a cup of water, I have a half a cup of oil, and two eggs, there we go, and this is the whole mix. Now, what I like about these kinds of mixes that I do, it's all in one bowl, you mix it all together, there's no steps, you just mix it, and we are going to put it in the muffin pan. 
that I, we, my, Chris already sprayed the muffin pan for me, so they are ready to go. But look at this, guys. It looks wonderful. Let's come on over here, because I want you to see the family here today. Oh. So here's everybody. You guys know my daughter, that's Emily, and actually Elizabeth, my mom's Hi. friend. And my grandbabies, that's Artis and Amory joining Hi. us today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of people don't don't know that you can add zucchini to any kind of a sweet recipe, any kind of a cake, and man, it just enhances the flavor. It doesn't change the flavor. Because no. zucchini, it's just enhances. Right. Zucchini is just a very yeah. It adds some moisture, but it adds like a little texture, My, yeah. and it just, oh, it just makes it so good. And you can add this to any kind of bread, to mm -hmm. any kind of dessert. Grandma yes. Susan, Grandma Susan that time when we were kids yes. made a chocolate zucchini cake. Yes. And it was the most delicious thing ever. <laughs> yes, yes. So zucchini Kathy, is just one of those great things that you can add to sweets. You can. Right. Yes, who's talking? Kathy said yes. uh, she's in 25 markets now in Rhode Island, Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida. Wow. She's working Kathy. with the owner of seven Piggly Wiggly markets in Georgia, in, uh, interested uh, to sell the sauce. Um, hope to make it your way soon. Your fans can purchase the sauce online, and she has um, the website www.cucinadecatharina.com and use the discount code we discussed. Yes. And then she said, if anyone has connections with distribution companies in your area, please contact me. And then she's given her email address on there. Okay, so Kathy, so she's like really going bonkers, that, especially the Piggly Wiggly Markets. They are, they are, they're all already, uh, they all the, uh, her sauce is already in the stores and, and being sold like crazy. Kathy's doing a great job with her new marketing and her sauce is doing great. And we're very happy for her and we're excited that she is our sponsor and we are using her sauce today. Okay. Now, if you want some of Kathy's sauce, um, you just need to go to the website. Her, uh, Elizabeth, if you'll read her website oh, for me. Yeah. So, uh, www.cucinadecatarina.com. Uh, uh, right, dot com. Yes. And, and then Kathy has it set up that if you, if you hear about it today on my show, then all you have to do is nook, um, I think it's two and four, right, Kathy? So if you do nook... Two, you get two jars, and if you do milk four, you get four jars of her amazing sauce. Okay, guys, I want to get these in the oven. There, I have some more batter, actually, and I'll make some more in a bit, but I want to get these in the oven. I'm actually going to put these in for about 20 minutes, and that's going to be perfect timing for me to be preparing the shells for you. Okay, that's in. Let me put the timer on and let's make some shells. Uh, Kristen Berry just joined us. Hi, Hello, Kristen. Everyone. And then Kathy said yes. How you doing, Kristen? I want to wash my hands. Thank you for being here, you guys. We appreciate that so much. All these but goodies coming back on. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you guys back. Some of you we haven't seen in a while. When we took our little break right before Christmas, like our last show is December 23rd, and we took not quite a month off, and so we're back and we're rolling. Now, last week I was supposed to do a show, but we got snowed in. We literally, physically got snowed in. And so I couldn't get to the store to get any of my supplies, so we had to cancel last week's show. But we're back. Here we are. Last week, uh, at one point, the Midwest was the coldest place on earth. <laughs> I, I believe it. We lived it. <laughs> okay. So, guys, I want to show you what I did. Jumbo shells. Okay. Now, these are pretty good-sized shells. Let me show you. They're pretty good-sized shells, okay? But you can actually buy jumbo shells that are literally about this long. I mean, like yeah. one is a, a meal, yes. right? Yes. So you could actually have jumbo shells or these. These are fine. These are fine, okay? Because we're eating lunch. You might have maybe a couple of these. They're not huge, but they're a perfect size for lunch, okay? One box, and I want to show you. I made another batch earlier, which look at this, guys. And I made this because this is all veggie, all vegetarian for me, okay? Because I can't have any any kind of meat. 
So that is just a straight sauce with no meats or anything. Now Kathy's, it's delicious. I've tasted it, even though I'm not supposed to. I tasted it. It's delicious sauce. And what she uses in her sauce are, are um, Italian sausage renderings. And when you're eating it, like it's like it's like there's like all these different dimensions to it, and then you can and you can taste that Italian sausage. It's delicious. And cooking it and smelling it, it really reminds me. I've actually said it earlier. Like we used to go to the San Gennaro festivals, which is an all Italian festival, and we've been to several of them actually. And this is what the whole place smells like. So thanks, Kathy, for the the aroma in my kitchen right now. Okay. Crystal Dairy says, by the way, thank you for the mug. Yes. You're and welcome. she said she uses those for her taco stuffed shells. Ooh, she uses what? The, the, the big shells. The big shells. Oh, taco. The taco. Shells. Yeah, that Ooh. Really now see, that doesn't sound like a combination that would go together, but no, I, I would eat that. Delicious. I would absolutely eat that. that. Okay. I think Mary Halsey is with us. Hello, Mary Hello, Halsey. Mary. How are you, girl? Okay, come here. I want you to get close, Kristen. I want you to see how amazing and chunky Kathy's sauce is. Look at this, guys. This is a. This is just absolutely delicious, authentic Italian sauce. Look at that. Kathy just said white wine in San Marzano tomatoes too. Yes, that's true. In her sauce, she has white wine and San Marzano. Now, San Marzano are. Oh, look at the mess I'm making are authentic Italian, like Italy, yeah. tomatoes. Okay. Uh, Carol Boyer just joined us. Hi, Mary, Carol. Mary Halsey says, hello. Hello, Mary. Hello, Carol. Thank you all for being Yay. here today. <laughs> listen, guys, I am so excited to be using Kathy's sauce. I have no, listen, I, this, right to smell? Are you going to just smell like this? Yeah, this no, right. Right. Okay, oh, I'm going to give, I'm going to give my family a little treat here and say, Make your salads. Yay! 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 <laughs> Go make your salads. I want. Uh, come on up. Okay. So the plates are here. So pl pl not silverware. Plasticware is here. And you guys just help yourself, Chris. I want you to be over here for one second. You got it. Somebody. Break the ice here. Well, well Emily's not going to. I say, I will, but I'm a good one. I can't eat lettuce. She can't so eat lettuce, but you can eat all the other Yeah, I'm a mom. I'm going to use all the other you stuff. Do, you do yeah. the, the main, mom. you do the main Italian. Right. Right. And, right. and, right. and what I ask them to do, guys, what I've asked them to do is taste one of the Stella Doro breadsticks and crumble one or two of them on for like a bread for uh, like croutons and then take one to crunch on. That's how we ate it when we were growing up. So show them making the salad. Vivian Wooster says, says, we are here. Courtney said, I know this is random, but I'm so excited I can't believe I won pot holders. I barely could hear what y'all were saying in the beginning. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Courtney. Yes, you won the pot holders and I really want to get those sent to you. This looks wonderful. You guys gonna make yours? I'll, I'll make mine last. Go ahead and make your salads. Have it make it for the girls. Don't worry. Okay, when you guys are done making your salads, we'll come back to you. Right now, I want them to see me making the shells. So, Chris, come on over here. I'm on my way. He's on his way. Okay, so I want to tell you what, what the cheese is, okay? I have, and I may have to make some more, actually, to fill all these, but it is one 15-ounce um, little tub of regatta cheese. I've got probably a half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. I have um, about a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. I have a bunch of parsley. I like the way the parsley looks and tastes in here. Not that parsley really has a taste, but then again, it sort of does. And I also put one egg. We, the Italians, we always put one egg in our cheese. And then I always take, I take a scoop of the sauce and put it in there, and that's this. That's why the, the cheese kind of has a pinkish tone, but it's the sauce. I don't know if okay. we said it, but Vivian yes. Wooster said, I'm here. Hi, Vivian Wooster. How are you, dear? Thank Hi, you for Vivian. being here today. Angie okay, Enriquez so is with us. Hi, Angie. How are you, honey? I'm thinking about you, girl. Okay, so I'm just putting is maybe a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of the cheese in the middle, and I put Kathy's sauce on the bottom, and I'm just going to put my, my pasta shells, my stuffed my stuffed pasta shells right on top of that sauce, okay? 
I'm, I only made, I have to tell you guys, I only made one box of the shells because, I, and I thought, well, maybe I should make two, but I made the one little tray, and then I looked and I said, my goodness, I have enough to make my other uh, pan here, so I didn't make two, so you get, you get a lot with one box of the, of the, of the uh, it's just a great value of shells, like jumbo shells. You get plenty, plenty, plenty of food. Oh, and look how easy this is. This, this, this is like so simple. And I do, you know me guys, I want the shortcuts, I want simple, because I can't be on my feet very long. And for some reason, winter has really affected my Meniere's. But I'm on the website and everybody is saying that winter, I guess the, the, the atmosphere, the pressure, the pressure whatever, is, is different and it makes you feel different. And so I have really kind of struggled through the winter with my manures, but who cares? I'm here, right? <laughs> I mean, not who cares. I'm just saying life goes on, it doesn't matter. You just move, you get up every day, you say, thank you, God, I'm awake, I'm up, and I'm gonna make some stuffed shells. There you go. Stacy Hardy is with us, she said, um, looks like she's going to take a plane to come get some. <laughs> she said, what about adding nice sausage with that cheese? You absolutely can. You can add, you can add like bell peppers and onions and sausage and, and she, whatever you she want. Said, um, some people add an egg to their regatta. Do you do that? I did. I, yes. And, and, and I when did. I, when I was saying, you know, when I mixed the cheese, yeah. I did say that I put one egg, okay. I put oh. one egg in. It, it helps make the um, the cheese even creamier, okay? And it's a good binder for the cheeses because you're this using more than one cheese. It is. Oh my God! Let's go see the salads. Oh my goodness gracious! Okay, let's see. Oh, look, that's a perfect. Sorry, I'm gonna grab your bowl. Yeah, thank you. That's a perfect antipasto salad right there. Perfect. Look at that, Elizabeth. Great. Look at these salads. You guys did a great job. <laughs> Emily, come take your lettuce-free. <laughs> lettuce salad. Your lettuce-free salad. Emily has ulcerative colitis, so she can't have. I'm sure she would love to have lettuce, but she likes lettuce. I love it. Lettuce does not like her. No. So she doesn't eat the lettuce. Okay, no, I am only gonna put I'll one be, more shell be done for in here. And then we're done. You want me to help you now? <laughs> okay, so now I just filled that up because I didn't have a lot of it regatta left. So I just filled that up with mozzarella. Jesus, 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 cheese. <laughs> okay. Loaded up. And I still have more shells. I can still make another pan. But look at this. This is all of these shells and all of those shells. And, and I still have more. So really, you could feed a lot of people on one box of those jumbo shells. All right, Kathy, I'm going to put some of your amazing sauce on top and across. And look at this. Look at this. Look, look, look. Oh, I always make a mess with sauce, but that's okay. It's when you're playing in the kitchen. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, Kathy, the smell is just incredible. Absolutely incredible, girl. I wish you so much luck with your beautiful product, let me tell you. Maybe you can tell me how, how you did all this, because I'm thinking of doing my, everybody keeps telling me I gotta jar my salsa. So, you know, I don't know how you, I don't even know where you start. How did you do this? How did you figure it out? <laughs> So Vivian just said, Val says we should make this. Yes. And then Stacy said, what sauce did you get again? Okay, so Stacy, uh, right today I'm using my sponsor, my friend, Kathy, Kath oh, Cucina de Catarina sauce, okay? And she is, this is a new product, but it's going crazy in the United States. And Kathy is traveling all over you know, selling her stuff and people are buying it. Piggly Wiggly markets all have it now. So she is doing amazing with her new product. And we're very happy and proud to have it here on the show today. So I am using her sauce. It's got San Marzano tomatoes. It's got white wine. It's got uh, uh, Italian sausage renderings. Just a fabulous sauce. So get some. And if you want some, you just have to go to her website, which is cucinadecaterina.com. 
and just say Nook 2 or Nook 4 and then Kathy will get that to you, okay? Um, I'm going to put my mozzarella, okay, mozzarella, lots of mozzarella. I may not talk like Italian, like an Italian normally, but when I'm cooking Italian food, it just, I don't know, just kind of, it just kind of happens. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle. Kathy says, oh, thank you. I'm going to sprinkle, my pleasure, Kathy, some Parmesan cheese. I'm going to pretty it up because, you know what, what's the flag, what's the Italian flag? Red, white, and green. Look at this, guys. And that, my friends, is going in the oven. Look at the little loaves. They look beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to let that cook. When the loaves come out, I'm going to add 13 minutes for cooking time for the stuffed shells. I want to clean up. Look, here's my one. salad. Let me see your salad. <laughs> well, see, that, that's all right. You're, I'm sure you're not the only I one that can't it. eat lettuce. And okay. you will enjoy it as much as anybody. Okay. And so, come on over, guys. Come on over to the table. We're going to sit here while we wait for the food. Thanks. I mean, look delicious. at this. This is so beautiful, right? Look at look at this salad. I can make a meal like this. Okay, mm. so this is absolutely gorgeous, and I have the balsamic vinegar, and I have yeah, and it's good, Italian really good. vinegar, and sometimes uh, the I don't know if you guys like like a uh, raspberry balsamic. Mm -hmm. You know, when you flavor the balsamics, yeah, I like that. That's really good. That would work with this with this also. Mm -hmm. Okay, since we have to wait a little bit for the food, I am going to go over some of the stuff that I was going to talk to so, you about really quickly. Yes, Kathy said I can introduce you to my manufacturer in Rhode Island about your salsa. That would I be fabulous. Yeah, that would be, yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Because I mean, honest, Kathy, I give you kudos because. I have no idea how you even began something like this. I've had people say that I should do the salsa thing and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't even know how to begin. I know how to do this. I, I know how to, to begin. For my son's birthday. Uh, yes, really. <laughs> so while these ladies are eating their amazing salad, Chris, you're going to have to wait for your salad. Uh -oh. I can do it. I know that you're like dying. It's okay. For your it's salad just whatever's right. left is mine. By the way, the drink today uh -huh. is just it's a mandarin orange sparkling water so with orange. Good. And they're loving it, so it's so easy to put a drink with whatever you're making. Okay. And yes, Carol Boyer said she missed it. What type of cheese did you use? In the in the uh, for the stuffed shell, not on top, right? So in inside the shells, I put regatta cheese. I used a 15 ounce container, about a half a cup of um, shredded mozzarella, and I used probably a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. I say probably because. You know, we just kind of go this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. But I know basically how much I put in. Mm -hmm. And then um, I put one egg, mix it all up really, really, really well. And then I add at least a um, ladle full of whatever sauce I'm using. And then mix all that up. And it, it kind of gives the, um, the cheese a pink color. But that's just the sauce. The sauce just colors it. But... That combination of the cheeses and the sauce make it cream mold. Mm -hmm. That was the Italians would say cream mold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the things we were going to talk about while the food is, is cooking is even though today is not a meat show, I did want to address meats because we actually get questions about, um, you know, the frost time and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk to you about just meat things today. You guys. Fill in, mom. Can can you guys see mom? I don't know. Mm -hmm. no. Everybody's. I can't tell you okay. how many times I've called you two to ask about me. Me. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so here's the thing: certain meats, like ribs and pot roast, if you're going to like grill them, the best thing to do is to parboil, which sounds crazy, but you if you parboil uh, ribs or a pot roast, okay? It makes for much better grilling, and I will explain why. Pot roast and chuck steak, which is what people normally do with a, for pot roast, yeah. they're bigger, tougher pieces of meat. And when you parboil that, 
it helps um, break down or tenderize, it breaks down all the, the tissue, the connective tissue that's in Anyway, by parboiling the meat, ribs or a, 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 you know, a thicker, tougher piece of meat, you're helping break up the connect, connective tissues, and that's really how you tenderize. But if you, you can't cook it more than 15 minutes, it's got to be 15 minutes or less, or you're starting to actually cook the meat, that'll make it tougher, okay? If that makes any sense, okay? So the process of parboiling 15 minutes or less, I would even say go 10 minutes, okay? Just enough to tenderize and start breaking up that connective tissue. Then you're gonna have, then you take that meat and then you put it on your grill and then you're gonna have perfectly tender meat, okay? Good trick. Now, the smaller the piece of meat, um, the less you parboil, okay? The less you parboil. So I was gonna show you um, a cow. Here's a cow. <laughs> okay. So why is chuck and pot roast meat tougher? Because they are right here. So the cow puts most of its weight on its front legs as it walks, which is you know developing those muscles to hold that big body of theirs together. So this meat right in here becomes tough, like if you kept working out a muscle. Too. Right, and it's cheaper. Yes, I've got that too. It's a, it's a cheaper cut of meat because it's not an in-demand kind of meat, a cut of meat. But if you're going to slow cook, like say you're going to make shredded taco, shredded meat for tacos or something Soup. like that, Soup. or you're going to make um, even on a, even on if you're going to do pork, uh, what's that stuff you guys make? Pulled pork Pulper. sandwiches. You're going to use a cheaper mm -hmm. cut of meat, and that's okay if you're slow cooking it. If you're going to cook like a nice roast that you're actually going to slice like a roast beef, you want to use like the rib roast. You want to use the middle part of the cow, which would be the rib steaks, the short loins, the flank, the, the um, plate. Of course, the tender wines, you know, the, the filet mignon, it's all this section right in here. Um, but anything right here, the chuck, the brisket, and the round steak, because they've got muscles by their butts too. This, this, so and this are the tough, <laughs> are the tough meats. Those are the slow cooker meats. That's hard. What I like to do with stew meat. I yeah. like to brown it, brown it, brown it, real, real good. Yes. Brown. Yes, and of course that renders a lot of flavor because now when you're browning your meat, it's it's got the caramelization on the bottom of the pan, which is great for stew mm -hmm. flavor or soup. Yep. You, make, you used to make a dynamite beef and barley soup. Yeah, when I was I a kid, I ate beef and barley soup, and that was one of my favorites because the flavors and those little pieces of barley. If you guys have never had barley in soup, oh god. It is, it's delicious. It's but barley is one of those things, it's kind of like good. rice, it takes a long time to cook. Mm -hmm. I can have so barley. It's barley, it's very good uh, make a beef barley soup okay. for a quick marinade, okay? You, you guys like marinating mm -hmm. yes. chicken and stuff like that. You can marinate pork, you can marinate, you can marinate anything. But, so the best thing to do to marinate milk. Milk. <laughs> 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 Don't marinate, don't marinate. That's a special oh, dish. Okay. Why did I say milk? I don't know, but I'm sorry you did. I... <laughs> the best way to marinate meat is to either hit it with a mallet. And I'm not talking like beat it up. I'm saying just because you want it intact. You know, sometimes like if you if you're going to do like a um, like chicken fried steak, then yeah. you then you really hit that thing, okay? But if you're just wanting to tenderize a piece of meat and you're going to marinate it, you're just going to hit it a few times with a mallet or a rolling pin or something. You're also going to poke it a few times with a fork. And I mean, don't, not this, not like that. It's just a few pokes. Now put it in a big giant like gallon Ziploc bag, okay? Put all your meat in there. Put whatever your marinade is in there. Zip, zip tie it. Put it in the refrigerator. To do 
to marinate quickly, just do it 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, you will have that kind of flavor on your meat, okay? And what I do is, if you, you you're, you're gonna have a lot of marinade left over. So if you throw, like say you're doing, um, I don't know, pork chops. Let's say you marinated your pork chop and you put them on the grill, use the marinade. Just pour mm -hmm. it right over, don't waste that. And then the nice thing about doing a Ziploc is that you just, you close it up or whatever and throw it away. I mean, there's like no mess and no cleanup. So it's a great idea. So Kathy, she laughed and said milk. <laughs> and then milk. she said yes, that she uses a fork and she puts it in the Ziploc bag. Too. Yes, and it really works. And you know me, I'm always looking for cut corners. Like I don't want to do things long. So for me, it, cooking, the, the cleanup is a big part of that for me to do it fast. And so a Ziploc, man, for anything, if you're icing or whatever you do, Ziplocs are great and you throw it out. So use it. Okay, cutting meat. Okay, I'm talking raw meat. Okay, I cut a lot of chicken. Like chicken's like one of the big meats, ground turkey, of course, but chicken is the main meat that I use in my diet. And I use a lot of it. And it's much easier to cut chicken when it's partially frozen. Now, yeah. I mean maybe 75% defrosted, okay? And you've got a little bit of that frozen whatever in the middle, okay? It's much, much easier and safer to cut when it's partially frozen. Sometimes when meat is, is completely thawed and you go to cut it, you can slip. But if it's partially frozen, it makes it much simpler. Did you know that adding tomatoes to roasts, if you're making a big crock pot full of, you know, whatever, meat or whatever, if you add tomatoes, it tenderizes the meat also because tomatoes have acid and it breaks, it, it breaks down the connective tissue which tenderizes meat. And if you don't put a ton of tomatoes, it's not going to change the flavor of your food. Let me see what's going on here. Okay. <clears throat> Look at the. All right. Let's see how our chills are doing. Almost done. I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit to speed up the process, and then I'm actually going to put it under the broiler for just a couple of minutes and watch it closely so I don't burn it, and come back for that. Okay. How are we doing here, Ash? Great. <laughs> <laughs> few more meat things, and then dinner will be ready. Lunch will be ready. So anyway, right. add the tomatoes. It tenderizes and it breaks down the connective tissue in the meat. For the most, um, the maximum safety in, in defrosting meat, you take it out the day before and you stick it in your refrigerator. And let it come down from frozen to refrigerator temp. Then you can take it out. If you're working with poultry, you do the same process, and when you take the chicken out of your refrigerator then to cook, don't leave it out more than two hours, because poultry, that's a whole different uh, ball game when it comes to, you know, bacteria setting in and all that stuff. Poultry spoils quicker than meats, okay? So be really careful. So maximum safety, thaw your meats in the refrigerator, okay? If you go to the store, you go shopping, you get a whole bunch of poultry, and you think, um, I think I'm going to leave some chicken out, put it in my refrigerator, and cook that tomorrow, okay? But then you didn't get to it. I've done that many times. Yes. So then you got another day of chicken in the refrigerator. It's really kind of a two-day thing in the refrigerator from store to getting it home. you got two days of uh, where it's okay you know you're not worried about any bacteria setting mm -hmm. that's why i said chicken poultry is a whole different ball game okay if you're going to if you realize within within that two-day mark that no i'm not going to make chicken I'm, i told uh you know somebody it's taco tuesday so now i'm no i'm not going to get it freeze it you can freeze it again you can, you can freeze it, it, not, it wasn't frozen not refreeze it 
It's just saying if it's a right, it's straight right. to the refrigerator. You bought it at the store, you put it in the refrigerator, it's there all going on two days, and you realize you're not going to get to it. Freeze it. Because that's the only way you're going to preserve that chicken. Otherwise, you throw it away. Otherwise, you have to throw it away. Yeah. You don't want it, you don't want to mess with poultry. Okay? Kathy said, you, we cook a lot alike. Yeah? Mm -hmm. that's what yeah. She said. <laughs> of course, it's t Italian girls right here. Look. All these women over here. Okay, I, I said I make a lot of chicken. So one pound of boneless chicken, one pound of boneless chicken equals three cups of cubed chicken. In case you ever need to figure out how many, how many, you know, um, uh, breasts should I take out? Okay, so one pound. So let's say you go to the store and you have a three pound bag of chicken breast. Okay, you need like one third of that. Okay, that is three cups of cubed chicken. Okay, then I did this. Oh, now she's got another cow. I got another cow. Here's my, my friend the cow is back. He shrunk. Here's my little cow again. Okay, I shrunk him down. Cute. This is the mom. <laughs> this, is the this, mom. Is this is the baby. And temperature, meat temperature. Meat temperature. Very, very, very. Now, when we've owned restaurants or we've worked in restaurants, I will tell you that, the, the, to me, now, and I know there are people out there that eat this. Have you guys ever heard of Blue Rare? Yeah, yes. it's almost, yes. yeah. Blue Rare. Okay. I've had it. So, yeah. you've had it? I eat oh. asked for it. Right. So, Blue Rare meat is when you take a nice steak, and you put it on a grill and you go, boom, boom. My mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Duh. That's how Terry eats it. Really? No. Mm -hmm. That to it's me like 30 is seconds scary because sides. if and you order, that's yes, raw. that's right. Yeah, that's how she eats She it. eats raw chop meat. Yep. Oh, no. I've yeah. seen her open up that's package That's dangerous. Yeah, that's that's very so dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> I would never do that. Really? There are people that I, like I the taste of raw, yeah. job like, of raw meat. Or she'll sizzle it like 30 seconds It's not good for you. Yes. You did it? No, it's like really that's scary. I don't like forget, it. forget everything else. It's but scary. It? <laughs> so here's the thing. If you if you're gonna do a well done steak, okay, well done piece of meat, you're about hundred and sixty degrees and above. Okay? I'm gonna work my way backwards so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Well done meat, of course, as far as that goes, is probably the safest, but most people don't like well done. I like well done, but most people don't, okay? So well done meat is 160 and above temperature. Medium well is 150 to 155, okay? Medium is 140 to 145. Um, medium rare is 130 to 135. Rare now, mind you, done meat is 160. Now we're down to rare at 120 to 125. Okay? Bacteria? Some restaurants won't even make no, rare they won't. steaks anymore. You have to sign for you it. You have to sign. Now, for those of you out there, and I know you're out there, who like blue rare, you're talking, your temperature is less than 120. That's scary. I, when I worked in a steakhouse years ago, this person wanted a rare steak. Well, I sent out what I thought was a rare steak. She sent it back. It wasn't rare enough. Well, she did yes. that like three times to yeah. me. Well, <laughs> this isn't very nice. I, put, I took one out of the refrigerator and stuck it on her plate and sent it out raw. <laughs> because I couldn't get it rare and the, the way she wanted it, it was raw. She wanted yeah. raw When meat. I worked at the Holiday Inn, I was, the, I was the restaurant manager at the Holiday Inn. This is many, many, many years ago. And there was a lady that used to come in and always wanted her steak blue rare. It's so and the <laughs> chef knew exactly how to do it because it's the same lady who wanted it. But I'm talking the top and the bottom of the steak was barely singed. I mean, it was, I don't think most restaurants even allow that. They don't. They, Not they anymore. Don't, and, anymore. and those that yeah. will do it, 
Okay, because if you they think of, they're it. like, you know, Japanese restaurants and other restaurants that do tartars, that's raw meat, yeah. okay? And so, um, but, but I think know, it also depends on sign. the, I think it depends on the quality of meat too, like, yeah, yeah you, you could that, do you like, got, like uh, organic beef. If you do like the, what's that, a uh, the, with a K, the, uh, the Japanese Kobe. beef, the Kobe, Kobe beef, yeah. you could probably eat that raw. Let's kind of put this in the, wow. under the broiler and... Crisp it up a little bit. So, mm -hmm. as far as, as, far as like steaks go, I'll be Yeah. Because last summer we did a lot of grilling outside. Yes. And I found where they there was a thing. You know, that's really close. <laughs> there was a thing that I, I want read. people to hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was a thing that I read that said, um, like, for... And a rare or close to rare steak, you do three minutes on each side, medium rare, four minutes, and well done or close to well, it's five minutes on each side. So that's kind of a good gauge as far as timing goes. Like, because Moses, my husband, he likes it more medium rare, and I like it more done. And those time, like that four minutes and five minutes, actually made a huge difference. Yeah, it's and our steaks came out perfect every time. So that's a good number gauge. That's a good, yeah, and, and that, you know, um, the other the other way to test meat, Mom, do you remember the other way to, t to test meat? With your finger. When you're cooking. If you, yeah. With your finger thumb. test. Okay. So, if your finger, when you're t when you're making steaks. Yeah, that's how I used to do, do it in the restaurant. Pork, but if you're, if you're testing steaks, and you just put your finger on the top, if it goes in, it's rare. It's, it's rare. rare. If it's you know, it's a little bit move, in between, it's, it's medium, and if it doesn't really move, it's well done. Yeah, yeah. that's how it that's comes how I used your finger. It. And most of the chefs that I know, that I work with in, in big restaurants <laughs> and stuff, that's, that's how I did. That's how. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Gabby Walters is on. Hello, Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Thank you for joining us today. Look at that. I'm that's very beautiful. excited about that. This looks. <laughs> look at this, guys. It's beautiful. Is that beautiful, what, Kathy? Your sauce smells oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it looks delicious. I'm, I wish I would have eaten this first. <laughs> well, that's dinner, Mom. Here you go, girls. Just take your face. Sure. You got cheese now, on top? You know, you, you can get the Parmesan. Here's the thing. I would, I would kind of let this sit a little bit. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of the show and time, I'm just going to serve it up. It's but you, know, you, know, you guys know Italian food is better if it just sits a little bit. So sounds. that everything's kind of absorbed in and stuff like that. It's delicious. But is it good? Absolutely. It smells delicious. great. Okay. And Thank you, though. Grazie. Grazie, yes. Thank you, Kathy, for your amazing sauce. Okay, here. That's right, Kathy's sauce. It's delicious. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, here you go. We want to thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate everybody joining and watching, and I hope your mouths are watering. <laughs> We're about ready to eat here. We'll see you next week, right here, 1 o'clock, Wednesday. We love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.